So this is one of the most innovative tools I've ever seen, and this is a Max for Live device called M2TM Notes. And the developer is promoting this product right now, so it's actually free until the 4th of August. It doesn't really cost that much anyway, it's pretty cheap, but it's free anyway if you want it, get it today. And all he's asking for is that you vote for him on the MIDI Innovation Awards. So I'll put a link to that. If you can kindly vote, that will be fantastic. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to start with something really basic, which is a single note. We're going to go into this MIDI transformation here. So we just type a note. So I'm going to type in A. It has to be uppercase. So if we just click on generate, it will generate the A note, as you can see there. Now, if we type another note here, say another A, and generate. And a D here. And an E here. Okay, so you're thinking that's pretty basic, but it is a super powerful. We just have to start with the basics to build you guys up, right? So let's go to the next step. What we can do now, is we can say what octave the note is. So for example, you want the A to be a zero. This is the bass note octave. What it does is it brings everything down to zero. So you literally have to push, say, the second note to the second octave up. So let's just do that. So you can see that's a zero octave. This is the second octave up. And everything just follows what was in front of it. So the D and E will also be second octaves up. And of course, the more you add, so let's add an F here, the more notes will appear. Now, by default, all the notes are a quarter note length, but you can actually change the length of the note. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change the length of the third note just by putting a colon like that. And what we're going to do is type in one eight. So it should shorten the note. So as you can tell, it just shortens everything that's behind it. So say, for example, you want the F to be a bit longer. We put the colon in and then we do one over four. So it might look a bit daunting, but actually you get used to it pretty fast. So the other thing you can do is add another colon after the time and say anything below 100. So we can say put in a number 20, and that will determine the velocity of that last note to 20. So you can see here straight away that velocity has gone down to 20. We can do the same thing here, but you'll notice there is no time. So we just have to put the colon in twice, and we put that to 50. By the way, everything after that will follow, so D will also be 50, as you can see there. So that's super cool, but there are other things you can do, so just bear with me. Why don't we just start again with a simple A note, A1 this time. We just put A in a few times, like that. Now, if we want to, say, have two notes playing at the same time, what we can do here is add a E, and that will just create a second note like that, just above it. So we can, for example, concatenate another note here. So this can be a D, this one here can be a G, and this one here can be a, let's say, a B. We want, for example, the concatenated notes to be a D sharp. Just add a little sharp at the end of it there. And say we want to add a third note, so we can add a C here. And we want that C to be a bit higher octave, so we'll say that's a C2. And we'll just add a, get rid of that B there, and we'll just call this an AFD. And we'll get rid of that sharp, we'll call that an E. And that first A, we'll just lift that up as well. But just say, for example, you just wanted to use chords at this moment. All you need to do is say, for example, add an A there and click on the chord button, and then you've got A major. So obviously, if you start adding in other notes, you'll get all of these different chords playing. But if you say you want the first one to be A minor, just select a little M like that, and you've got A minor, no problems. 
and you want a seventh note, we can add a seven to the E and a seven to the A minor. Now what's a real game changer here is you can actually change the voicings pretty easily. So for example, you can add an AV to the beginning. So we've got all of the voicings at the minimum distance. So they're probably not the best combination of chords. So let's just fix that up a bit. Let's clean that up. Let's just do a really simple face. <laughs> and we just have a E minor there on the E and an A minor on the A. Let's just generate those. Remember, these are voiced now properly. Oh, by the way, I forgot. If you want a space between the notes, what you can do here is, for example, add an R, and that will be a rest note. It's going to be playing at the same. Um, it's going to be playing at the same speed as the other notes. So let's just add the R. And it works exactly the same as the notes. So say you want the R to be a very fast, let's say 1 over 16 rest, so very fast rest. But remember, everything behind the speed of that rest will inherit that speed. So we just need then to bring the C back to whatever we need it to be. So in this case, let's just say 8, and the E minor will also be 8. So let's just start again here. Let's just make this nice and simple again by just calling that a C and calling that an E minor. And what we can do also is we can add something called legato. So legato just acts like any MIDI legato that you'll see. It will just smooth over the notes and put them together. Pretty useful feature, I think. Now, the other thing you can do as well is we can keep the voicings, get rid of the legato. What we can also do is add arpeggiation. And then this is super cool. So all you need to do for arpeggiator is add an AR. And by the way, if you think you're not going to remember all this stuff, the product comes with a PDF manual and it shows you all the different notations and codes and what they mean. But I'm telling you, it doesn't take very long to learn them. So for example, with arpeggiator, we just type an AR like that and an underscore. And what type of arpeggiating do we need? So for the arpeggiator, we'll just type an AR in like that and then an underscore. And we say we'll start with up, down. So we'll just go up and DN for down. And you can see here straight away, you've got an arpeggiator that is up and down. Now, if you think that's a bit fast, what you can do now is add a little colon to the arpeggiator so you can change the speed of the arpeggiator. So maybe you want the arpeggiator to slow down a bit because this might be a little bit too fast. So what you can do is you can actually slow down the arpeggiator notes by default. And we can just check this here. This is 1 over 16. So if you just generate that, it should generate exactly the same. But say we want to slow it down, we can just type in an 8 instead of the 16 and listen to that. Or we can make it even faster if we want to go crazy. So we can just select 1 over 32. And you can really experiment with some of these numbers. So for example, you can go 1 over 7 or 3 over 2. So another thing you can do is you can actually place a different arpeggiator after a different chord. Now, this is something that's not very easy to do on a standard DAW. You can do it through automation, but it's not this straightforward. So say, for example, after C, or let's say after A minor, we want to have an AR arpeggiator, pinky up. So you see here, this is all up, down, but we can just change this to pinky up after A minor. Isn't that crazy? Let's just take a quick listen to that. Or just up, and we can, for example, have up, down, after A minor. Let's just try that. And let's just slow it down a bit here. So we just put the colon here. And what we'll do here is we'll put the colon there, and we'll just slow that down to 1 over 8. And let's just put another colon for velocity, and this one will be 20. So, I mean, that's super cool.